Well, I have kept a journal since I was about six or seven, so I've been writing since I, way before I could actually spell anything. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and I've always really liked writing in pretty books. Like, I never was one of those Triton notebooks. I always went out and, like, bought a nice journal and um, didn't think too much about the handmade aspect at that age. But um, when I was in college, someone asked if I wanted to learn how to make a book. And um, I had never really thought about it before, but it made economic sense for me at that time to learn how to make them. And so I went to an evening workshop with some friends and kind of made one. It was really floppy and swore I'd never make another one. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I ended up actually helping a friend start a um, community organization in the area that was based on bookmaking. And so we had, we, it was kind of like an old-fashioned quilting bee where we were, were teaching people how to make them and then selling them and wanting to use the money to help folks. But I did that for a few years and then decided to go on and do some other things and um, people started asking for journals for gifts and wanting to buy them from me and so I kind of just started doing it on the side a little bit and decided, you know, what if I could like do this? Like what if I could make books for a living? And so I decided to just try it and see and um, I've been full time for about three and a half years now. So I, I get my materials kind of from all over. I, when I first started I actually was working with a repurposed mat board from frame shops. So map board that was being thrown out, but I don't use that anymore. I, but I, it is really important for me to use uh, repurposed and remnant and recycled materials as much as possible. So I work with coffee bags from a local coffee shop um, here in town, Coffee Times, and I also work with um, old vintage book covers that I find everywhere. And then the leather is from manufacturers. Most of the leather is from manufacturers that have close down where it's like their old stuff they're kind of getting rid of, so it's remnant leather. Um, I feel like the materials actually kind of chose a lot of the designs. Um, you know, some of the applique work and stuff of course I added, but because I was working, um, especially with really small scraps in the beginning, I, you know, you just have like a very small piece of leather and it's like that's not enough for a book, and so it only made sense to put a couple pieces together to have enough to actually work with. So that's where putting the different colors together actually came in. And then um, because the leather, because of the um, thinness of the leather I used, I knew I needed some kind of closure. And so that's where, you know, the flap and the beads and stuff all kind of came into play. Right now I use um, all recycled paper that's also acid free. And I just buy it all in bulk online. I am slowly starting to um, integrate some handmade paper too, but it's very pricey and so it's kind of a slow process, but um, people will be able to use that more with watercolors and that sort of thing as well and look really nice for like wedding guest books and baby showers and that sort of thing will kind of, you know, just be a different feel. But the recycled paper is really nice, people have loved that too, it's got a nice texture as well. Yeah, Kentucky Crafted, they've been awesome. Um, I've made a lot of contacts through them and I got to go to the Philadelphia Buyer's Market show, which I would have never been able to afford that at this point on my own, so that was a great experience, and um, they're really great about just promoting artists in general. I feel, I mean, I've had so many opportunities I would not have had otherwise, so it's been great. <laughs> I can't say enough about them. <laughs> yeah, these little book necklaces, um, I they've been like the hit so far this summer. I've been making them for a few years, and you know, all the products kind of have an ebb and flow to them, but these little bitty books, um, everyone is drawn to them from like men, women, um, little girls, older women, librarians, teachers, book club members, like everybody loves them. And I actually have started doing um, little Christmas ornaments with the little bitty books too. And I mean, people are sending in so many fun ideas that they're doing. Like people are doing watercolor in them and writing poems in them and putting little um, thumbnails of pictures and giving them as gifts to like their loved ones. And it's really fun to see what people are doing with all these little bitty books. Oh, they're actually over here and I use um, a variety of tools to do that. This little roller thing works really well and different, I use different rollers and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's all straight up by hand. 
Um, and so once the cover is done, I go over here to this um, really fancy paper cutter <laughs> and literally cut and fold every sheet of paper that goes in the book. So all books are made up of um, signatures, little papers. So all these little booklets get cut and folded, and that's what I sew together. Okay. So, uh, but all the binding is hand bound. So after that, then I go with the cover and the paper, and I actually poke the holes and sew the covers. Wow. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of where I live. <laughs> yeah, but it, I mean, it's great. It's really great. And now that I have a fan in here, it's even better. <laughs> For new ideas, sometimes there'll be, you know, a week or a few day lull in between orders or shows, and that's where I'll try and at least spend, you know, set aside half of a day or something to kind of experiment with those. That doesn't get to happen very often. Usually what happens with new ideas is I have enough people ask for custom orders, where which I take quite a bit of custom order work. So I end up developing a lot of the ideas that I have for people for their specific orders and then once I get I can kind of use those to figure out designs while I'm still like working and then I'm able to go ahead and develop those into products but lately there have been so many ideas that I've had um, like last night I was just slipping in a couple new ideas in the middle of other production work so I'm like oh let's just do a little new with the old and <laughs> I'll just stay up a couple more hours we'll see what happens <laughs> it did yeah I have a new, a new size that I just um, decided as of last night, so I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> yeah, I also try to do, um, if I can come up with new, like have time to develop new designs, I try and do them right before shows so I can get people's feedback. And then um, usually they're not offered for wholesale until a few months after once I can figure out, you know, good price point and all that sort of thing and, and really know what um, folks are looking for in that particular product. So. At this point, I'm still figuring out all the business aspects just for, you know, mm -hmm. myself, but I'm I'm open to expanding a bit, and, and I have had some people come in and help from time to time, especially with stuff like, you know, cutting and folding paper and the things that just take a lot of time that, you know, people can definitely help with. Mm -hmm. So off and on over the past couple of years, I've brought in a couple of folks for a few hours here and there. and. And it definitely helps when I get overwhelmed to just have somebody else just, you know, take care of an aspect of it like that. Yeah, I, I feel really, really grateful. Frequently overwhelmed, overwhelmingly grateful that I'm able to do this and that it works and that it keeps working. <laughs>